Hello and welcome to this course. This is not a regular course, this is going to be a practice with TDD, Node, TypeScript and Jest. And we will focus on the checkout kata. This is a preview on the other courses that we have published. We have three courses. We have first the introduction to TDD in Node and TypeScript, where we see the basic rules of TDD. We start understanding how it works using some small exercises. Then we have a second, a second course that is building APIs doing TDD in Node and TypeScript, where we build an API starting from inside, building our way out. And then we have a third course called Building APIs Doing Outside in TDD in Node and TypeScript, where we receive an open API specification file and we will start from there, building our way inside our system. So this course or this practice is just going to be a one simple exercise where we will practice TDD and we will practice also uh, object-oriented programming. So the kata that we're going to do in this course is the well-known checkout kata. Here in this kata, we need to write a program to implement the checkout system of a store. Uh, this program will receive a string that is, as you here see in the example, A, B, B, D, B, B, A, C, that represents each one of the items or, or products that are in the basket, and it will return the total amount to pay. Here you can see that each item has a fixed price that in case of A is 50, in B it's 30, in C is 20, and in D is 15. But the products A and B have uh, some discount. So whatever you get three A's, uh, you get a discount of 20 currency amounts. Uh, you, pay, you pay 130, and if you get two B's instead of two times 30, you pay 45 only and here you can see some examples um, when we send two a's we pay 100 and when we say we send all these items uh, we pay 260 because here we don't have we only have one a b but we have three a's and in the other example we have three a's three b's three c's and three d's and we will apply the discount for A and B that are uh, necessary. So let's try to implement that. OK, so let's get going with the code. We will use this initialization script. What it does is initialize the npm repo. I'll, I'll execute it in the meanwhile because it takes a while. So it initializes the npm repo. It creates a source and a test of folders, installs the TypeScript dependency, the, the Jest, TypeScript Jest, TypeScript Node, the types for Jest. It creates this uh, TypeScript configuration file with these uh, parameters. Then it also creates the Jest configuration file. And finally, it creates a small test to verify that everything is okay. So let's wait until everything gets installed. As you can see, everything getting created. Cool. So we have this example test. Let's see if we can run it. I'm going to call test with the course exit. There is a typo here. And Everything is okay. This should pass. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to create one with the watcher. I need to restart all the time the test. And uh, we can start, I guess. So I'll run with the watch. First, what I'm going to do is to rename this file and call it checkout. I'm going to come here and rename that. And let's start with the first test. So 
what I would like to do. As the first test, um, looks like it's a good candidate to assess whenever we send nothing. So it should um, return zero when no items are sent. So whenever we do check out nothing, we should get a zero. Okay, let's create this as we don't need to manage any state so far. I'm going to create checkout as a as a function. This checkout is a uh, item list, but it's a string, and it will return a number. That is the total amount that we have to pay. Um, I need to return something. Return. I'm going to return a null. So if I come here to the test and I import it. Okay, I have a red test now. That is telling me that. Um, well, I'm expecting a zero. I'm receiving a null. So I'm going to do the simplest thing I can do. I is returning a zero, and now it should be all green. Even though it takes a while, this laptop. Okay, so we have the very first test. Let's move on. Um, let's start with sending an item. So it should return 50 when sending an A. So if we send an A, it has to return 50. This, if I run it again, has to fail. Okay, now, so I'm going to do the simplest thing, that is, if item list is equal to A, return 50, otherwise return 0. Cool, so we got A covered, let's go for B. Oops, this naming was not okay. So we have to return 30 when we are sending a B. So 30 when sending a B. This test will fail. Because, yeah, we are. If I run it again, we'll see that better. Um, we are receiving a zero when we are expecting a B. As it's not a, uh, anything, it will go through this case. So I'm going to duplicate that and adapt it. So now. If I run them again, cool, we have another one. Let's go for one more. So we have 20, that is when we have a C product or a C item. Um, yes, we are getting a zero. This is exactly what we wanted. So whenever it's a C, we want to return. OK, that's green. Nice. And um, the last case or the last item, it's whenever it's D, we are returning a 15. We run it again, has to return a 0. Okay, so we have a red test. Now let's make it green. So we have this and now it should be green. Cool. So, okay, we have a basic test. 
uh, basic implementation, um, no much room for refactoring so far, so let's create a new behavior. Um, maybe we can go um, taking more than one item at a time, so it should return 100 when sending two A's or, or two D's, whatever. Not 100, um, it's going to be 30. So this is going to be 30 when sending D, D. And then again, to have the proper red test. Okay, so we have a problem here because we take, we assess only one character. So um, something that we could do is to have a, a total amount to return. And um, we will have a four loop to const item and we will split that for each character so we'll go one by one and now instead of returning this value what we will do is add it here to the total so total would be that now Not that one. And then at the end, um, return uh, the total amount. Hmm. I need to make a proper before properly. And this is not item list, this is item. Okay, so now um, it looks like it's working so far. Let's make a new test to return um, when sending one of each. So we make sure that it works for all the cases. So one of each would be 50, 130, 80, 100, 115. And know what this would happen when we send A, B, C. Okay, so yes, apparently everything is correct now. And uh, we can move on with something else. Okay, I see here now a test that we could do is what happens when we send an item that is not here listed. So let's write a test for that. It should, what we want is to throw an error. So it should throw an error when sending a known item. So when we send something, I don't know, zit, it's not a to be, it will throw an error that is called un known item error so okay here at the bottom we could have an else clause here in all these cases and if we arrive to this very end we'll throw a new error Alt un known item. 
Mm. Throwing, okay. Because we need to be called through an anonymous function here. Okay, now we got it. Um, we have that. Here I see some improvements that we could do and it's get rid of all these magic numbers. So I'm going to extract that into this module, calling it um, the price. I'm going to do the same for all of them. So module, this is the price in the module. And a, a price, print price. Okay. Um, something else that we could do, maybe, and improving that before going to other functionalities, is to create a, a class for each one of the items that we have and so they store their own price um, so let's do that we have we could create first an interface or item that's going to be generic interface and we could get a price that is going to return a number. So now we could create classes for each one of them. Implement item. So I need to implement that. And instead of throwing this error, uh, return a price. And we need to repeat that for all the items. I'm going to use this sophisticated copy and paste method. This is a C. And then we have a D, finally. Okay, we haven't broke anything, but we are not using them. So, to use that, we are going to create a factory um, that so far can be a function only. And living here, we need to item factory. We need to move that into file, but we can do it later. So this is going to return an item. That is going to be one of each. And it's going to take as a parameter a uh, item the item char that is going to be a string. So okay, what is going on with that? What we are going to do is that same if or similar. Um we don't need these else words, I think. Because if item char it's um, D, we will return a new instance of that. New D. And we will do the same for each one of the cases. New C. New V. And anyway, okay, the same, we are still not using it, so we haven't break anything, but we will now. So here, instead of doing that, what we will do is start using that. Um, we probably need a better name for that. We could use that item char, rename it, and uh, we will have this item that is going to be uh, the item factory 
return sending in the item chart that we have and now what we will do is this operation of adding to the total whatever amount we have and in this case it's going to be item get price and we could get rid of all of this because we don't need it anymore and nice it's still green we haven't break anything Okay, maybe it's time to move these things out of this file so it doesn't get that messy. I'm going to create this item. I'm going to move the interface there. Extract, no, sorry, export. And I will have the factory also there. Export. And probably move each one of them into a different file. A And the so D is going to have that and also that that will live inside this file only. But we need to fix this import. Okay. A will live in A and also the A price and we need to fix this import the same with B we have this price and this implementation with this import can close A and finally C going to do exactly the same and we'll need to fix the imports here and all the imports here no it's not detecting it So I need to do that manually. Maybe it's not the best name, this ABCD. Um, import B from um, I need to export that. Probably why it's not recognizing it. Port, port, an export. So now, okay, now it works. I'll restart the test because many changes happen and. Usually there are errors. Okay, we're still on green after this refactoring. So, so let's move on. Now we have pending the discount. So to do that, uh, we of course will write a new test. So it should apply a discount when having three A's. So whenever we have, maybe we can use this line. Whenever we have AAA, what we should actually return is 130. 
No hay hop, we have an error. It's not a proper error. It's not true. It's on HTML 30. Now I like more. So let's work with that. Here, well, it's going to be the total calculation here, and I don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to do again this this calculation. So what I will do is to um, have a probably not even that. I'm going to count um, how many items we have. A counter. That is going to be the item list completed, and we are going to take only the item that are A's. So this is going to be item that is equal equal to A. And I don't need to have the an array because the filter is returning as an array. I want to get only how many. So we have that. Um, okay, so now with we have the number of A's that we have, and we know that every time we have three, we have to apply a 20 in the whatever current cities. We have to discount 20 every three. So what I will do is to the total is going to be that 20. And for that, it should be, um, wait, not like this. Only if there, if there are more than three. Um, to pass this test, I meant. If I um, try to pass this test, applying this would pass, but um, we need to make that intelligent. So only whenever we have three A's. So if A counter divided by three, What I want to do is to take only the non-decimal part, so I can do a math. It's going not round. It's another one. Um, I don't remember. This. So what this will we do is, okay, we have three now, and uh, we'll divide and take only the non-decimal part. So in this case, it's it's one and it's okay, but imagine we have a four or a five. This is going to be 1.3, 1.666, whatever. So this is going to take only the, the non-decimal part, and we will um, count that as many times as we have this number divided by three. So um, let's write another test just to verify, or just, let's change this one. So instead of having three A's, we're going to have um, eight, for instance. So we'll have one, two, four, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be two times 130, so it's going to be two 60 plus 100, 360. And um, it passes, so that implementation was okay. Um, apply, uh, this should apply twice. I need to re rename this. Twice the discount when having eight days. Cool. So let's do the same for the other discount that we have. 
the other account says that we need to apply the uh, we only need to, once the discount on having I don't know three bees. So it says that whenever we have two bees, we have to uh, charge forty five. So we have fifteen of discount. So when having two bees, it's going to be forty five plus thirty. And this is 75. And of course it's not because we are not getting this discount applied. So we will do something very similar to that so far to make it green. And it's going to be refactor this. So whenever we have a B, um, this is not going to be every three, it's going to be every two, and instead of 20 of discount, we're going to have 15 of discount. Um, this is wrong also. Okay, so we have it green. So far we have all everything we need, but let's see if we can change that a bit or improve that a bit. What we could do now is to create a discount class so we can store this and calculate and calculate all this discount there. So class we're going to call it discount. What this would have, we need to we need to identify which kind of item it is, and maybe we need to create an enum first um, item type, and we'd have a. It's going to be like this. B. So private this is item type of item type. We are going to have another one that is this thing that is the number. Um, or quantity of discount that this is time number and discount that we will apply that is of type number. On this class, what we would have is a method called calculate discount that is going to return a number and as a parameter it would require this item list and we will have that here inside. So we'll take the number of that and instead of accumulating here, we have to return that. Um, now instead of, is going, we have to update that. So this is going to be this item type. If it's equal to that, this is going to be this quantity and this is going to be this uh, discount. Okay, as we are not using it, we haven't break anything. 
and now let's try to use it. Let's do it first. Like here, maybe we can start with A. So we can const discount A. So it's a new discount that it takes item type of A. And then it's three, the quantity and the discount is 20. And we will change the total with this discount calculation. And what happens if we remove that? Oh, I need to send the item item list okay so looks like it's working and if we do the same with a b so instead of calling it b This is going to be B, this is a 2, this is a 15. And, okay, we have that. Looks a bit better. I will move that to item. Going to export and also move that into a discount class or file discount.ts. I'm going to export that. So can come. Oops, oops. So which one is broken now? Not anymore, let me restart. Okay, so we have this in green, but I would like to refactor this because it's not something um if if we want to add discounts and this so on uh, we cannot have this hard coded so for that i would like to create a class that is going to be called i don't know store and we will pass this uh, discounts to this store and then use this in the inside the checkout so to do that um, let me change that or create it here class uh, store and uh, i'm going to receive these discounts in the in the constructor so um, discount list that is going to be optional it's going to be a discount list Um, this is going to leave, oops, I'm going to export the class and it's going to leave inside this store class. I don't need that. Um, yeah, now I need to come here and fix everything. <laughs> so... Okay, now an empty store, and I need to uh, 
change all the calls. No. Oh. Okay, now it's green, but this store is not receiving anything, as you could see here. What I would like to do is to move that here outside, and also this. I will need to, of course, import that. And I will inject that discount A, discount B. So far, everything is, is okay. Well, no, it should not, but anyway. And what I would like to have now is here a discount. Discount equals to zero and go or iterate this discount list and calculate the discount of discount list and discount is going to be plus equal this um, sorry total discount And whatever we have on this discount, and here what I have to do is to apply the discounts to the final price. So Hmm, I like more that now I have here all this logic in item I have this other thing and maybe I can clarify that a bit and extract that um, in a method Oops Calculate total, that should be this name. And also do the same for that. Calculate discount. I could even rename that into a discount. And Even make it constant. So, yeah, this is a better approach to solving this exercise. I like more. Calculate the total, calculate the discounts, even though we're, it's not probably optimal because we go and check this item list. Uh, once and again and again and again um i think this matches more this the business modulation so yeah that's it